Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie's at Dawn. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we have the last match for tonight, or replay rather, which is going to be Sparkles versus Manu 12 on Wanderlust. Another Wanderlust map, but fewer jump bots. In fact, it is Shield versus Cloakie, the classic matchup. Manu 12 going for Shield Bot Factory and going to be going for Early Worker as a Sparkles with the Cloakie Bot Factory. Both of them going for an initial worker into Sparkles going for, ooh, Reaver. Reaver start, but not Reaver rush. Reaver into Glaive. Interesting. Sparkles looks like they want to do a bit of a hard push. And just, you know, slowly push in. Not really, maybe, oh, unless what they're trying to do is have the Reaver in their base, just in case Raiders come in, while using the Glaives to counter raid. But not going for super early raid. This is an interesting build. I don't usually see this. Normally, what Mana 12 is doing is much more typical. Build five Raiders. Like, worker, five Raiders, or Raider, Raider, like two Raiders, worker, three Raiders. That's the typical approach. Sparkles, on the other hand, going for this Reaver is not what I'd expect, but I like it. Just provides a little bit of extra defense without having to build the early Lotus. It's like, I mean, it's still getting an early Lotus, and it's definitely more expensive. It's three times the cost, but it's also, well, it's more of a Stardust, really. And any early Raiders come in, they're done. So I like the thinking. I'm curious to see how it'll pan out, but it's certainly an interesting idea. And there's the, yep, there is that counter raid Glaive going for the late raid. That is risky, though. The thing is, the early raid is powerful because of the fact that your opponent can't build up for it. Late raiding is actually kind of interesting. We see right now in Manu's base, they don't have any defenses set up. They have one Lotus, but they don't have much else. So that's kind of the risk. Because on the one hand, if your opponent thinks, oh, they're not raiding yet, they might build defenses a bit later, and you might be able to win off that. But if they build the defenses early, as they normally would... Like, it's more of a conditioning thing. If you do that a lot, then they start getting careless on defenses, and then you drop Raiders, then it's worth it. But in just one game, in a match-made game, I don't see the value as much. Like, I, I don't think that's what was going on. Still, though, the Reaver... Actually, quite a bit forward. I'm not sure why it's where it is. That's... I mean, if it runs into the Bandits, great job. But it probably won't, so I'm not really sure where that's where that's going to come from. At any rate, with... With the bit, the bandits coming in the north side, though, that's a bit of a problem, because now Sparkles is still falling behind. I mean, like I said, that Reaver, it exists. It's providing some assault force. It's actually going to be able to get rid of these bandits, no problem. But they've already done their job. They already got rid of the Metal Extractor. And they're also possibly scaring Sparkles from building over to the north. Nope, never mind. Sparkles is perfectly content to go to the north. Especially since the Reaver is over here. So I guess that is the idea. Sparkles wants that Reaver to know, or that Reaver to be around so that they know whether or not Raiders are nearby. And if Raiders are nearby, the Raiders die. Again, I like the thinking. At this point, though, Sparkles is in a bit of an awkward position because they don't have a whole lot of defenses outside of that one Reaver. On the other hand, Manu 12 has got, like, well, they've got five bandits so far. And they're getting rogues to counter the Reaver. And the Reaver's coming into assault, so now there's not a whole lot of defense for Sparkles. Yeah, I'm not sure here. I mean, Sparkles does have the Ronin coming in, which is nice, I guess. And the Reaver coming in, which is useful, but the the Rogue is going to counter that. They're already one up. The second one's being... Well, the second one's being queued. Not built yet. But will be soon. Although, hey, Reaver Glaive Assault. This is kind of what I was talking about. The late the late Reaver Assault. Like, come in after there's nothing left, but it's not enough. Unfortunately, did not prioritize getting rid of the Bandits first. Tried to go for the Shield of the Convict did not walk under the Shield of the Convict either. If they walked under the Shield of the Convict, it would have been able to get rid of it, and if they prioritized the Bandits first, it would have killed them too, and then had fewer units to worry about. At this point, though, Sparkles does have at least a reasonably strong force backing it up. They have another Reaver that had more Ronin. They can easily get a bunch of Glaives. They have 20 metal per second, so they... Like, anything they want to build is, like, five seconds away. Okay, these are... These are more. These are about 10 seconds away. But still, if they have the Caretaker on there, it's... 10 second Reavers, 5 second Glaives or Ronin. So they can easily deal with whatever Manu throws at them for now, but again, they don't have any production here. Mainly focus on getting the static defenses going, and the static defenses are doing their job, I will admit. Managing to hold off their opponents a bit, and the Bandits never healed up because Bandits not auto heal, and they never got the healing to work with. So, that does work. The only downside, of course, is that now Manu 12 has the initiative. Massively has the initiative. Sparkle's going into intercept, going in the north side, but even then, there are already half a dozen forces in here, or half a dozen bandits and rogues in here, 
They can get rid of the Lotuses. They can get rid of the Metal Extractors. Forcing back the Conjurers. At the very least, the reinforcements can't come in. That is one major advantage to this assault that Sparkles has had. But the other problem is that Sparkles, again, has not built anything in the main base. They don't have any caretakers. They have power. They do have wind generators in a more sensible location. 0.4215, that is more efficient. That's kind of on the edge of what I consider to be efficient, but it's reasonably close. On average, it will outperform a Solar Collector. But, it's more important, like, worst case, it still won't be too far behind. And these ones are great. 0.62.5, yeah, that's definitely when you want to build wind gens. But again, that's the thing. Manu 12 just, they completely surrounded Sparkles. Like, Sparkles, they had the... That Reaver was a good idea, but unfortunately they lost it going forward. They were not keeping it as defensive. They didn't have a backup. They didn't have anything to defend the north if that Reaver got shut down. I think I think Sparkles went in with the idea that the Reaver would be able to rip apart anything and didn't prepare for the contingency that the Reaver would die and then a counterattack would happen on the north side. Had they done that, we probably would see that this north side would still exist. But they didn't do that. And as a result, Manu 12 has a considerably stronger economy. On top of the fact that Sparkles is e-stalled. I mentioned, no, not bad spots for wind generators, but there aren't enough of them. Like, they're reasonably placed. There's just, you need a hell of a lot more. Like, two or three times as many. Actually, three times as many. Easily three times as many as this. Like, get 30 wind generators in this situation. Especially given the control that Sparkles has over this north. Like, this plateau, 0 0.6 to 2.5. That's definitely where I start to go, okay, build wind generators. Just no questions. None are being built. There's loads of room to build them in. Or build a geoplant. Either way. But we're seeing neither of those things. And again, no, the caretaker is just now being built. But it's too little too late. That needed to be built about four minutes ago. Like, right as soon as forces started moving away. That's the thing with the first caretaker in this game. It's kind of deceptive how quickly you need to either build it or get a couple workers stuck in your main base assisting your factory. I, As in, it minute and a half, like, 132 minutes. If it gets past that in the clock and you don't have that and you have plus 20, I don't know what's going on. If you don't have plus 20, then you're either on a really, really famine map, which most matchmaker maps aren't. I don't think any of them are, actually. Or you need to expand a lot faster. But if you have expanded a lot faster, get that caretaker within the first two, three minutes of the game. Oh, yeah, fair point. Yeah, so... Yeah, Dying Throne pointing out something that most succinctly encapsulates both what we were talking about earlier regarding the Cyclops and what I've been harping on recently regarding Caretakers, which is that Caretakers enable high economy games. Like, they enable games with a lot of production. They enable games that get to units like the Cyclops, which explains why in high-level games, or it's a good, good explanation, potentially, why high-level games have been so dominated by Cyclopses recently, because Cyclopses are powerful units. Now you have the Slow Beam, you have just strong shells, you have a very tough armor. I think it's 10,000 HP, something like that. So, you've got a lot going for it, but the thing is, unless you're building up your production capacity and your economy to the point that you're getting reliably plus 30, plus 40, plus 50, you're not going to be building Cyclopses because they're too expensive. You're, you're going to die before you get any out there. But once you get to high-level play, where caretakers are never a problem, like they just, they're built, production's never a problem, accessing's never a problem, well then Cyclopses just pop out. Which is why we're probably not seeing a whole lot here, because Tank Factory is hard to play with unless you know how to survive the early game and really get into that late-game production, or mid-late-game production. Which is harder to learn at the lower levels. Even this is like Platinum Purple. Not sure what Purple is. This is like Singularity. This is one of the... This is, Manu is a very high-level team player. And, I mean, to be fair, they're also winning very handily. Sparkles, on the other hand, is Platinum. Not bad. About the same rating as me, actually. But I also don't play very much. I really should play more often. Eh, anyway, the point is, I might... Eh, whatever. I've had, I have a lot of excuses. But that, the, the excuses aren't important. What's important is that without caretakers and without constant production, it's difficult to make expensive units, and it's difficult to want to play the factory all about expensive units, namely the tank factory. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. They wouldn't see Cyclopses in games that aren't the highest of high level. Especially if they're not being played on, game, on maps that are really flat. But again, Wanderlust is apparently a map that really supports Cyclops meta. And again, I see it. It's a there's a it's a map with a lot of economy to it. You can easily get plus 20 by the first minute. You can easily get plus 30 or 40 just by taking a little under half the map. I mean, Manu doesn't even have half the map. They've already got plus 44. They have some overdrive, sure, but that's another thing. There's two geoplants and basically your starting base. And another one right next to one of the north like the north or south ridge. 
So there's plenty of energy. There's plenty of room for overdrive. And the way the cliffs and ramps are set up, it's not too hard to secure reclaim. So this is a good map for getting Cyclops. This is a good map for getting expensive units. And it's, again, it's cliffs and ramps, so it's not too hard to run vehicles on. Which means, overall, it's a great map for Cyclops. So yeah, good point, dying friend. However, that being said, Sparkles is actually doing a fairly good job defending. It's a little bit of a desperate defense, considering that their opponent has twice their economy. But even then, I still respect that. The lightning gun of the commander's nice touch. Overall, though, the Ronin are really the main thing. They are outranging most of Manu's forces, so they do make it a little bit harder for Manu to get in, but at the same time, Manu's just got this path. Gonna go over here, go around back. The Ronin might try to stop them, but there's fewer defenses over in the back, and no workers able to build up any further defenses. And right now, Sparkle's commander is not going around the side to help deal with that, nor are there any conjurers being sent over there to build up any defenses. There's nothing. The Ronin are going over there to try to flank. Good thinking. Actually, there is one conjurer. Never mind. Building a picket. But mainly it's the Ronin flank. The Ronin flank is the thing that's going to keep them alive. For now. But Manu just took the south side of the map as well. Like, Manu's kind of taken everything right now, and that's the thing. Sparkles doesn't have a whole lot to work with. Manu, on the other hand, has plenty. So, it's just a matter of time. And I mentioned before, like, caretakers. Any, any take home? Caretakers! And yeah, Sparkles, I think, is a newer player. I don't know if they're the one that was actually requesting the game. I don't know if Fugenter is Sparkles or Manu or what. But I think if there's somebody else who saw this game and thought, hey, this is a really good game for talking about things like caretakers and general economy advice and how not to east all and why it's important not to east all. Although, at this point, Sparkles has managed to get their economy up, but it's all a matter of timing. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, Sparkles has their economy up now, but it's a matter of whether or not the timing works out, which it didn't. Because. At this point, they're desperately fighting for their lives, while their opponent has two-thirds of the map under their control. Not the most charitable situation for Manu for Sparkles to be in. Manu's kind of ahead. By a lot. I just say, I think Sparkles is doing a great job holding off the assaults. It's just that the north side's gonna get assaulted. And the south side's getting assaulted. Nothing's defending the south side. The north side's getting defended, but even that's starting to run out. I mean, the knight's doing a fine job helping, but even then, it's still... You no, know, Sparkle is going to rebuild, get up to about 25, maybe 30 metal per second with a reclaim, and then go for one final push. They have the... They have the... Oh, they don't have the energy. They have the caretakers, they don't have the energy for it. So that's a bit of a shame. They had both. They... Well, they live longer. They die slower. I don't think... I mean, getting rid of Mass Thug is very difficult without using something like ticks. I mean, imps. And I don't see any imps being built. If we saw imps being built, I could see, you know, they jump on the imps. There are no, or very few outlaws being built, because at this point, it hasn't been necessary, so Manu is focusing a lot more of the resources on thugs, which would be taken out by a well-placed imp. Wipe out their shields, walk in with the knights and reavers, rip them to shreds. That opens things up a fair bit. And if Sparkles can expand and reclaim behind that, there's a chance. A very, very minor chance. But unfortunately, that's not happening. Instead, we're just seeing forces flank Sparkles' base on all sides. Manu's not letting up at all. Again, Manu's got three times the economy. They don't have to. I mean, they can match anything Sparkles throws at them and then put a similar army elsewhere. So they got really no concerns. It's just a matter of when is Sparkles going to surrender, which is probably pretty soon. I mean, I can't imagine the towel is not going to be held in Sparkles' hand for much longer. It's going to be thrown. Okay, when I say there's a chance, it's like, you know, being struck by lightning levels of there's a chance. It's theoretically possible. All the particles in my body could theoretically spontaneously teleport into Norway. It's just not likely. Though, admittedly, free trip to Norway wouldn't wouldn't necessarily say no. Assuming it's south of Norway. If it's north of Norway, I'd probably just die of exposure. Anyway, Manu 12 takes the game, and that is that's a massive economic lead. Massive economic lead. And the excess as well from Sparkles is not ideal. Only a thousand metal, unlike last time. Still, though, that was at a point where Sparkles likely... No, definitely a point where Sparkles would have had an advantage army-wise. Even then, they had kind of an army advantage. But if you look at where that happens, like the excess starts around here. And that's a third of the way through. Yeah, that's their army value. They lost army value as a result partially of that. I mean, Mana was only slightly ahead overall by attrition. Oh, you killed? Yeah, Manu was already ahead there, too. But, 
you know, with a bit less excess, that still would have worked out. Sparkles would still have been in an okay position. So, with that, I will be signing off. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And, again, I'm not yet really streaming regularly. Again, as mentioned in the earlier video, probably not until September. Not necessarily early September, maybe mid... I don't know exactly when. It's a bit hard to work out the exact days for moving. But, sometime in September, I will definitely start regularly streaming again. Until then, I will be irregularly streaming whenever. So, just follow and stuff will happen. Sometimes 0k, sometimes other games. But I had a lot of requests for 0k replays, so I figured, now's a good time to do 0k. Let's do some of those. I would have done it yesterday, but I had a wedding to attend. So, that was fun. Anyway, thanks for watching again. And, oh, sorry, Tufty. Thanks for watching. You can... I guess watch the VOD if you haven't seen it already. Although if you're on YouTube, you just saw it. So, there you go. You can watch it again if you'd like. It's still there. But, until next time, thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone. Oops. <laughs>